Hi, I'm Dr. Paul with Online Chiropractic Marketing Systems and welcome to the Chiropractic Personal Injury Marketing Show and we're with attorney, personal injury attorney Brad Souders, a personal injury attorney right here in Tampa, Florida and he specializes, uh, does a good job in taking a niche in personal injury. He actually does uh, auto mo or excuse me, motorcycle injury, he does a very good job going into that niche and he's been at it for 20 plus years. So the topic we're talking about with Brad today is uh, the short list of factors that doctors can do to help the personal injury attorney with the case, okay? So let's uh, give us an outline on that. What would you say that would be, Brad? Number one, good reporting. Good reporting. And defining good reporting, you would say? Start off on the, on the right, you know, put your, put, your best forward, put your best foot forward first. That's the initial narrative report. And you want that, um, you want a narrative report, cumulative, pretty quickly. How soon do you want that right after they see the patient? Well, my, my thought was when I said that is just getting it done, getting it documented and getting it into the file. Oh, okay, getting a good report into mm -hmm. the file, okay, mm -hmm. as opposed to leaving out content. Correct. Okay, good reporting. Um, uh, initial narrative, so having an initial narrative. And when you say good, help me define a good initial narrative. What would your definition of that be? It's covering those elements of what I would expect to see an initial narrative report. You know, Dr. Paul presents with chief complaints of headaches, neck pain, and back pain. Uh, next paragraph would be uh, he, he presents following a, a history of motor vehicle accident just two days ago and tell the patient's story about what happened, how the mm -hmm. accident happened. And then three, uh, any prior medical history. And then four, the doctor does his exam physical examination. So examine each part, document each part, and then Next, do your impressions or your diagnoses. What are your initial impressions? Mm -hmm. Cervical strain, thoracic strain, lumbar strain, as an example. And then do your plan. Okay. And you kind of have a short list here we talked about earlier. You talked about in the report all the chief, all the various covering all the various chief complaints, uh, all the prior medical history, all the physical uh, examination findings, all the various diagnoses and the plan for each diagnosis and so um, that's really what we're referring to right in the report. And, and another case of illustration is what if you had a knee injury? What if your knee hit the dashboard and that complaint wasn't documented and maybe the patient saw another doctor three or four months later and that doctor documented the complaint and then later when we're presenting the case to the insurance company, I've seen some cases where the insurance company does, doesn't believe the knee was injured from the accident because the first doctor didn't, connect didn't, the dots. didn't, didn't put it in there. Right, okay, I could see that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, we talked about appropriate testing and referrals. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, that was just being the quarterback and with all the different chief complaints and send either directly addressing each of the chief complaints and. Um, therapeutically or sending them to the proper provider who does treat those and acting as a good quarterback with the case. Uh, and we talked about appropriate um, uh, and timely, and of course the timely testing is getting those done early on. Um, billing and bookkeeping, can you comment on that? Yes, I think, again, put your bet, best foot forward first. When that patient presents to your office for the first time and your front desk person or front window person receives that patient, it's a responsibility not just to the patient but also to your office to run a tight ship, to have a protocol in place. So when John Doe comes up, you want to do the um, initial intake and that initial intake should be accurate and complete with respect to their insurance information. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you have that here, uh, account for the insurance, account for insurance payments, what's that? Well first, if we're, we, if we need to get the insurance information, the auto insurance. Okay, right. And we need to verify that auto insurance. Right. We need to verify coverage. Right. And once we've done that, then we can maybe make sure the patient has filled out the application for benefits Okay. if it hasn't been done already and then your office is going to be billing timely for services rendered right rather than the old days where some doctors would wait 60 wait days right right because they didn't want a deductible 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those days are gone. Right. At least in Florida, the law says the doctor has to do certain things from the initial date of treatment. Right. You okay. know, like a disclosure and acknowledgement form. Right. You know, those sort of things. Okay. So, have a, have a tight ship and do yeah. things right the first time. Okay. Account for other payments. Um, Account for other payments. There's a doctor I know that will does not put in his ledger when he's uh, getting uh, other payments from other insurance companies. For that um, condition and problem. And that's making it, say, say he's received the PIP benefits and maybe right. PIP benefits have exhausted right? and maybe we're fourth month in treatment and maybe he's now billing Major Medical, yes, right. United Healthcare or Humana or somebody, right? And he's getting those payments, but eventually, when that plaintiff's attorney has ordered the chart, the medical records, and the billing, you cannot see from that chart or the records he's produced those other payments, right? Okay, and that makes it difficult for the plaintiff's attorney later in the case, okay. Because what really has happened is there's another party that's become involved, call it Humana, right? And they've paid benefits, and they have lien rights, okay. And so now the attorney is behind in addressing that lien, okay. Because number one, he didn't even see it because he didn't see those payments being made because right. the doctor didn't even put it right. in his records. And these are definitely legal issues, they're not clinical issues. So, account for all payments received. Okay, okay. And transmit that information to the patient's attorney. Okay. Uh, do not charge for final reports. What's your opinion on that? There are some doctors that want $475 for their final report because okay. it's going to take them an hour and a half to dictate it or process it. Right. And frankly, I'm of the opinion that, you know, good business is being glad you have a patient who makes a nice witness, who has good insurance, right. who has a responsible attorney, who's pursuing a claim, and this should be something that's just gratis. Now, you said uh, final reports. What about the initial reports? How do you feel about them charging for the initial reports? Honestly, the same. Is that right? Because I think, I think when you're in your initial consultation, if you're efficient, you should be able to hit that okay. initial narrative report pretty, pretty easily. You know, it's interesting you say that. With my attorneys, that I had a referring relationship, yeah. that is how I treated them. Correct. They, they didn't get charged. Correct. Now, for attorneys, I didn't have a refer, referring relationship. I didn't know them, and it just by chance, I did charge them for the report. Well. I know when there's a doctor that's charging me for an initial or a final, that's that's a bad impression. Okay. So from a personal injury attorney's perspective, getting charged for re narrative reports is bad. I'm just, I'm being honest. Right. No, I'm with yeah. you. I'm with you. I appreciate yeah. it. Okay. Uh, and it's, like I said, I the guys that I work with, I tell them the re referring attorneys, I do tell them not to charge for reports. Business is built on relationships. Right. Exactly. And the more you can, you, the more you can separate yourself from the next doctor right. just down the street. Because, from that alone. Yeah, right. because you're doing yeah. everything. Right. And you're not charging for everything. And then when that attorney has a new client, who do you think he's going to exactly. refer to? Exactly. Which kind of goes along with timeliness. Mm -hmm. You know, getting them your records within three weeks, not billing for the final reports. And you have here also not excessively billing for copies. You're okay with them billing for copies? Of course. Okay. Of course. Yeah, but not but just ridiculous. Okay. Right. Okay, and again, it's it's interesting you say that. It's these little, you know, somewhat little things relative to the big case that would really destroy the relationship. So it's interesting you say that. Okay, timely responses. We talked about that. And we, your your idea of timely was within three weeks of the request, uh, and just being able to negotiate to some degree. I'm, I'm here. What I'm hearing from you too, depending on the you know the amount of money and the pie, so to speak, is if the doctor is just willing to do something. Does that sound fair? Well, it's a case-by-case -case basis. There's some cases where I need the doctor to negotiate his best, give it his best you know, effort, because we have limited funds and we're trying to do, you know, put something in this client's right. pocket gotcha. because after, you know, minimum attorney fees and cost, right. and then you got all these other providers, right. and we were I'm, I'm really looking to that primary treating physician who also got paid PIP 
to really cut his bill so I can put some money in my client's pocket. Okay, I mean, we were going to address that at, mm -hmm. in, in detail later. So that's the short list of factors doctors can do to help the personal injury attorney with their case. Uh, and it's interesting that you know some of these are just common sense, good narrative report, clinical factors, but how by how you can actually have a leg up by just being timely, uh, having complete reports, not charging for the reports or excessively for the copies. So how those little things can make a big difference in your relationship with the personal injury attorney. Okay, so that's the short list of factors that doctors can do to help the personal injury attorney with this case. And again, I'm Dr. Paul with Online Chiropractic Marketing Systems with Brad Souders, personal injury attorney right here in Tampa, Florida. And this is the Chiropractic Personal Injury Marketing Show. And we will see you on the next episode. You take care. Bye.